Hello fellow officials. Today we're going to run through the basic requirements of the kit we'd expect you to have when you turn up to officiate and then we're going to move on to more advanced requirements as you find yourself responsible for the assisting or setting up of events or indeed chiefing events or even to the point where you find yourself refereeing events. So to help us get through what you need to bring to athletics to be an official we have our wonderful Sarah Davis here hello Sarah so Sarah if you could please start stepping us through what we would like officials to turn up with for their day of officiating all right to start with we're going to cover what's good for an official to have because the first point is to look after yourself so we officiate mainly in the summer. A pair of sunglasses. Mine have special little microscopes in them so that I can see in all conditions. A name badge is always handy so that people know who you are. A water bottle is essential. We all need to keep drinking water. Some hydrolyte when it's particularly warm to maintain your electrolyte balance some insect repellent to keep those flies from driving you mad or mosquitoes if you're up in the tropics sunscreen vital a hat but conditions can get wet and cold so a pair of wet weather pants and a jacket. To take these things out on the field of play, it's always handy to have a little black bag. Then everybody's required equipment can travel out onto the field of play with just one person rather than us all looking like a motley crew. Now, for the basic beginning of your journey a clipboard with a pen I tend to use the big power ball because it'll write in the wet you can get them from office works a yellow highlighter a highlighter of any other color doesn't photocopy well and you upset the admin department a ruler particularly useful in our vertical jumps the restraining strap to hold your paperwork when there might be a bit of a breeze around. If you want to move a little bit more up market, you can always have a weather writer. Landscape for vertical jumps, portrait for the throws and the horizontal jumps. Note the plastic cover, very handy when it rains. But if you can't do that, you can always use a plastic bag to keep the other clipboard dry. Then, a flashcard. White for yes, it was a good throw. On the back, red, when you want to indicate to your fellow official it was a foul. Particularly useful in throws. A stopwatch, vital when you are assisting with the timing of running an event in terms of how long an athlete's trial can take. And a handy little reference guide because certainly, especially in our vertical jumps, the time can vary. Also, if you're on the track, a little notebook in which you can make notes on incidents that may occur that are not necessarily a reportable incident. Reportable incident. Thank you, sir. But could be handy if there was a protest on a particular incident. Okay, Sarah, so we've now turned up two hours before our first event. Why are we here and what do we need? Well, the most important thing to do is to set up in preparation for the event we're running. A great starting point is our rule book. 
which will give you layouts for your throws, where you put a wing gauge for your horizontal events or your track events, heights of hurdles, also a myriad of information. Very important. If we start with our, our vertical jumps, cloth tape, just pick it up from the paint part of Bunnings. This can be used to put our, create our vertical plane beneath the bar of the high jump and extending it out three metres either side. A marker, a marker for the bar so that the bar always goes back the way that it was when the event started. Amazing how these little fellas can move. A spirit level. This can be used to check the feet of the stand to make sure that they're level in all directions and the bar's in a stable position. A smaller spirit level that you can sit on the bar to make sure the bar is level in position. If you then go to the horizontal jumps, we'll get the jumps out of the way first, a tape measure to go down on the runway for our athletes to be able to mark their takeoff point. So would I expect the venue to provide that for me? Normally they would, but you'll always find a situation where maybe they don't, or maybe everybody wants a tape and they haven't got enough. That's happened a, new, a number of times. This can be secured on the runway with your, dub, with your cloth tape and a pin at either edge of the tape, of the cloth tape, to prevent you from destroying a good tape. Pins to help secure the tape. A steel tape to make sure you have the correct height of the wind gauge. Mini craft sticks, excellent for packing out that wobbly takeoff board in triple or long. A handy little multi-purpose tool. You'll never know when you need that to undo a screw. A rubbish bag for athletes and officials to put their rubbish bag rubbish in so your event site doesn't look untidy. A piece of chalk. This comes into play with our throws events when you need to mark the foul lines more clearly. Often, especially at shield level and things, venues aren't looked after and the athlete can't see the foul line any longer. Once again, our Spirit level comes into play when you're setting up an EDM. Very important for them to be level. There's usually one in the box, but if there isn't, you're prepared. The golf tee is used mainly as a checkpoint for the EDM, so you can do a check measure at the beginning of the competition and at the end of each event. Okay, Sarah, so we've set our event up. Athletes will be arriving shortly. What have we got here? Well, now you may be chiefing an event. Most importantly is our rule book. We, at the moment, we're sort of in transition. So this is the old rule book. These are the new rule books. Oh, what's so special about this first page I'm seeing? It's an index of where the rules are and what they relate to. Ah, more importantly, I see what are our current rules in the green book. There. And then where we will find them in the New World Athletics rules, which are now being referred to as technical rules. Very useful cross-reference for those of us who haven't quite learnt the difference. Excellent. Excellent. And of course, you also may be running a para event. It is vital to do the job well to make sure you are au fait with their rules. Uh -huh. Excellent. When you're running a throws event, 
You can have age groups ranging from under 14 all the way up to under 20 and open. The weights of the implements vary. It's wonderful to have that information set out clearly in front of you. Makes it far easier for everyone. In every event that you go to, you will need a set of flags on the field of play. White for a good throw or jump. Red for a foul. The yellow is used in our time clock situation. Most field events, one minute is the time allowed. The flag is raised at 15 seconds. That's 15 seconds left to go. For exactly. Their time. And it's those pole vaulters who have those special times that differ from everything else. But we will get into that another day. Yes, pole vaulters and don't forget our high jumpers, Stuart. They vary too. A set of runway markers, always handy for our, vertic our horizontal jumpers and our javelin throwers, pole vaulters too. For our high jumpers, tapes, flat pins to secure them because we don't want them tripping up, a pair of scissors to cut the tape, or you can have my beautifully designed Peter Westwood runway markers for high jumpers. With our pole vaulters, apart from runway markers, Kite strings, when you're up at four metres and the wind's blowing a gale, you need to keep that bar in place. A tape measure. This is often used again by our high jumpers to measure their run up. We don't leave a tape lying out. Okay, so what's this funny little yellow card sitting ah, here? Ah, well, one day, hopefully you're all going to be referees. Yellow. To warn the athlete they're pushing your buttons. Red when, oh dear, it's time for them to leave because they've been unpleasant. Okay, Sarah, so we've found ourselves as an official all the way up to refereeing. So what are we looking at now? Well, we're looking after our athletes, Stuart. It's been raining and all the benches they need to sit on are wet. What better than a chamois? to wipe them down. Can't have wet bottoms. A towel, always handy for an athlete, especially our throwers, to wipe off the implements. Oh, which could become even far more important now in our post-COVID life. Exactly. We should have some sanitizer. <laughs> Just use your imagination, everybody. Pins, athletes are renowned for only having two Maybe three, we need four, so we can all see those bib numbers. Band-aids, I don't know how many athletes spike or poke themselves. Why wait for first aid when all you've got to do is pull out a band-aid and stick them back together? Ah, now would we just let them do that themselves? Because I don't think we're meant to provide medical assistance, are we? We can give medical assistance to keep the event growing but you can give most people a band-aid and they'll do it themselves some tissues there's always going to be some tears somewhere and last but not least some jelly babies just to put a smile on their dial when they're sad okay thank you very much Sarah I think we have comprehensively covered what we could find in our kit bag the thing is is this kit bag now too big to get through carry-on at the airport? Yes, Stuart. <laughs>